Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Raz, and in this video, we will talk about decision analysis using the non probability techniques and tools. So, if you're ready, let's start. In our everyday lives, we are always confronted with situations wherein we need to decide whether to do this thing or to do the other thing and we may not be aware about how we decide or how we act based on the situation but somehow at some point we always tend to weigh whether which decision, which course of action is better whether to do this thing or to do the other thing so we tend to evaluate which action which decision would give us better or more advantages or more benefits unconsciously we are always looking forward to making decisions to doing actions which would give us better consequences of course who would want a negative consequences we tend to decide based on our instincts or we tend to ask someone or some people to give us advices like our parents or your siblings or friends or your classmates. So these are the normal situations that we always encounter in almost every day of our life. So in this video, we will discuss and evaluate which techniques or tool in decision analysis would fit better to you as the decision maker. But before that, let me ask you a question. If you will win a million pesos today, what will you do with your money? I know you'd say you'll buy some expensive things or you'll buy the new iPhone 12 Pro Max or maybe you'd say you'll give something to your parents or you'd buy a house or a land or an investment or you'd save something from that one million or, or maybe one of you would say I will go abroad and travel and explore, eat, experience the most luxurious and expensive hotels. But the truth is, once you are already in that situation, you have that one million in your hands, it will be difficult for you to decide on which or what you will do with that money because there are a lot of things going on in your mind. So you tend to weigh which course of action would give you better future benefits. But Whatever you will do with your 1 million pesos, it's still your own decision. And no one can dictate you in what you should do with your money because it's all yours, anyway. Okay, so it is said that there are a few components in decision making. Number one is our decisions. That is the first component of the decision making, our decision. And the other is the states of the nature. When we say state of nature, this is the possible actual events that may happen in the future. For example, if you're confronted with a situation to decide whether you should study now or study later and then and you have to choose which is your option, which is your choice. So you'd say, I will study now, that is your decision, and the future outcomes of that situation or decision is called the state of nature so maybe you would be saved from cramming or from procrastination or maybe you would have enough time to master your lesson so those are the future possible consequences of that decision so the decisions are what we made in the present while the states of natures are the events that would happen in the future once we have undertaken such decision okay so let's have here an illustration about decision making without probability so these tools and techniques are actually easy to implement or to use because we are not going to use complicated statistical tools or techniques in order for us to decide so we are just using these tools based on how optimistic or pessimistic we are in ourselves so for example if you have an idle funds of 1 million pesos you have evaluated several options on where to put your money so you would get the best possible result so among the choices you have are the following so option one is to buy a warehouse for lease so this is your first course of action to buy a warehouse for lease and then option two is to buy an office building for lease. Again, it's for lease. But under this case, 
you would buy an office building rather than a warehouse. And you also have option 3 in which you would buy stocks in the local stock market. And option 4, maybe save in a time deposit. And option 5 is to buy a car for rent. So these are the five choices or course of action that you are trying to weigh on how to use your 1 million. So you need to weigh which of these options will give you a better result. So you consulted your advisor, an economist, and presented to you the following possibilities. So he said that if you would choose warehouse for lease, if the economy will be good or the economy will have a better performance under good condition, you will have 80,000 pesos as a return, as an income from that lease. While if the poor conditions of the economy will happen, you'll only get 40,000 pesos, okay? And if you would get an office building for a lease, you would get 100,000 pesos if the economy will be good and 25,000 pesos only if it is poor or the economy is not really doing good and there are poor conditions. And also, if you would invest in stocks, he said that under good conditions, you would get 170,000 pesos and that is actually the greatest among these options and then if the economy will turn bad then you would get a negative 50,000 pesos or a loss okay so that is actually a risk and then if you would save in a time deposit he said under good condition you will get 30,000 pesos but if poor condition will happen in the future you would only get 20,000 pesos and lastly, if you choose to decide to buy a car for it, you would get 96,000 pesos under good condition and then 33,000 pesos if the economy will turn bad or under poor economic conditions. So there is a lot of numbers or figures given by your advisor and you are trying to weigh which among the five options would give you the best um, outcome considering that there is a possibility uh, that the good condition will happen and the poor condition will happen so if you are an optimistic decision maker you would really say you'd invest in stocks because that would give you the highest possible return or income however it is not always true because if the poor condition will happen if the economy will turn bad or will perform bad in the future you would get a loss and that is actually a risk on your part so you'd say probably getting a warehouse is better if you are a pessimistic person and you focus what if there will be poor condition in the future Maybe you'd say, oh, getting a warehouse is the best option because it would give me the highest possible return if there's a poor con if the poor condition would happen. However, if you also try to analyze if the good condition will happen and you have invested for a warehouse, you will regret by not investing in stocks or office building or even car for rent because they would give higher um, value of the return so there's a regret a possible regret on your part so in this case we will analyze this problem using the different decision making tools and techniques without using probabilities so th there are five tools or criteria in decision making without using probabilities so these tools or criteria are the maximax criterion the maximum criterion, the minimax regret criterion, the Hurwitz criterion, and the equal likelihood criterion or the Laplace criterion. So we will discuss these five criteria, these five tools, each of them individually in this video. Okay? And we will start with the maximax criterion. So under this criterion, the decision maker selects the decision that will result in the maximum of the maximum payoffs. So when we say maximax criterion, this is where the decision maker chooses the option which would give him the best of the best result or payoffs or, or income. In other words, this criterion applies to decision makers 
who are really positive and optimistic that they see only the best of the best outcome. So in our illustration, we have these options under the good and the poor conditions. Under the maximax criterion, the decision maker would choose the maximum of the maximum payoffs. And in this situation, of course, the maximum of the maximum payoffs is within the good conditions, okay? Hence, we will focus our attention in this particular column, okay? So, in this column, the good conditions, this is where the maximum of the maximum payoffs lie. So, we will focus our attention into this particular column. And among the five conditions, among the five options, it is the investment in the stocks which would give the decision maker the best or the maximum of the maximum payoffs. Hence, if you are the decision maker and you are very optimistic that the economy will really turn good, the good conditions would really happen in the future, then of course, you will choose investing in the stocks, okay? Hence, under the Maximax criterion, the decision maker would choose investing in the stocks because it would give him the maximum of the maximum payoffs and that is 170,000 pesos. However, a caveat, this could not be true. This could not actually happen in the future. This could not be as good as what you have expected because again this decision relies on the optimism of the decision maker so if you are that kind of decision maker very optimistic then you choose investing in stocks under the maximax criterion in contrast under the maximum criterion the decision maker selects the decision that will reflect the maximum of the minimum payoffs so, in contrast to the Maximax criterion, under the Maximum criterion, the decision maker is somehow pessimistic and is not really expecting that good condition will happen. Hence, he would choose to invest or to decide considering that poor condition would happen in the future. Because again, in this criterion, the decision maker is not really that positive or not really that optimistic about the certainties of the economic condition. So again, we have this table, we have this illustration. So in the Maximax criterion, we focused our attention with in the good conditions, okay? Because the, the decision maker is optimistic and expecting that good condition will happen in the future therefore he would get he would invest in the stocks but under the maximum criterion we focused our decision on the poor conditions meaning we are expecting that poor condition will happen we are somehow pessimistic and expecting the worst of the worst to happen and if it's good if it if the conditions are good then that's okay but assuming the poor conditions will happen at least we have decided conservatively so under the maximum criterion the decision maker selects the maximum of the minimum payoffs so this column is the minimum payoffs because this results to poor conditions and then we will choose or the decision maker will choose the maximum payoffs and that is investing or getting a warehouse for a lease it means that if you are this kind of decision maker who is conservative who expects the worst rather than the best if you are that kind of decision maker then you would choose the maximum criterion okay and that is not bad being optimistic or pessimistic is not bad at all okay it really depends on your personality your attitude your behavior your decision because after all it's you okay so but for example the decision maker decides to purchase a warehouse for lease in anticipation of poor economic condition only to discover that economic conditions in the future were actually better than expected naturally the investor you the decision maker would be disappointed that you had not purchased the stocks okay so if you are this kind of decision maker you 
focused on what if there would be poor conditions you focused you decide on the least or you expected the worst what if there would be a worse economic conditions so you will choose to invest in the warehouse but in the future after you have invested it turned out to be good economic conditions so naturally you would be disappointed with yourself naturally you would regret because should you have known that good conditions will actually happen in the future you should have invested in stocks but since you don't know yet that good conditions will happen you focused you decided based on your pessimism based on your expectation that poor economic condition will happen okay so that is actually causing you a regret because you have invested in the warehouse for lease in the anticipation of poor conditions so you would only receive 80,000 pesos and you will regret you will regret why you have not invested in stocks wherein it could have given you 170,000 pesos because if you should have known that good conditions will actually happen in the future i mean if you have the power to know that good conditions will happen in the future you might have invested in the stocks but since you don't know what the future would be you decided based on your feeling that poor conditions will happen so that is also a caveat for maximum criterion because it is an uncertainty no one knows what would happen in the future so this leads us to the third criterion which is the minimax regret criterion in this criterion the decision maker minimizes the maximum regret by choosing the decision which would avoid him the maximum regret in fact the investor would regret the decision to purchase the warehouse as in our previous illustration and the degree of regret would be 90,000 pesos. This is the difference between the payoff for the investor's choice and the best choice. That is 170,000, the return, the income that could have been earned by the decision maker if he should have chosen to invest in the stocks, that is 170,000 pesos, less the actual payoff that the investor gets from his choice and that is from the warehouse which gives him 80,000 pesos so the degree of regret is 90,000 pesos so under the minimax regret criterion the decision maker attempts to avoid regret by selecting the decision alternative that minimizes the maximum regret there are a few steps in minimax regret criterion the first step is that the decision maker first selects the maximum payoffs under each state of nature. So in our example, the maximum payoff under good economic conditions is 170,000 pesos and the maximum payoff under poor economic conditions is 40,000 pesos. And all other payoffs under the respective states of nature are subtracted from this amount. So we have this illustration, okay? So we will first choose the maximum payoff under each state of nature. So for good condition, the maximum payoff is investing in stocks, which would give us 170,000 pesos. And under poor economic conditions, the maximum payoff is investing in warehouse for lease, which would give us 40,000 pesos. Okay, so that is the first step to select the maximum payoff under each state of nature. The second step is to subtract all payoffs under each condition. So we have here under good conditions for option of buying a warehouse for lease. We have here the maximum payoff of 170,000 pesos. And when the decision maker would choose the warehouse, he would receive only 80,000 pesos if good condition will happen. So if the state of nature is good or the good condition will happen, the decision maker would have received 170,000 pesos. That is the maximum payoff. He would have received 
170,000. But since he has chosen to invest in warehouse, then he would get only 80,000 pesos. And the regret, the degree of regret here is 90,000 pesos. But if poor economic condition happen and the investor has chosen to invest in warehouse, he would have regret zero or nothing because he has chosen this option, okay? Next, if the decision maker or the investor has chosen to invest in the office building for a lease and, and it turned out to be good condition, then he would receive only 100,000 pesos and he would regret that by 70,000 pesos because if good conditions would happen, he could have received the 170,000 by investing in stocks. But since he has invested in the office building, then he would only receive 100,000 pesos. Okay, and there is a degree of regret which is 70,000 pesos. But if it turned out to be poor economic conditions, then the regret would only be 15,000 pesos. And then if the investor has decided to invest in stocks and then good conditions actually happened, then he would regret nothing because he have invested in the stocks and good conditions happen. There is no regret on that. But if poor conditions happen, there would be another regret of 90,000 pesos because he would have a loss. He could have earned 40,000 pesos by investing in the warehouse. But since he have chosen to invest in stocks, then he would regret 90,000 pesos. Okay? And if the decision maker, for example, invested in time deposit, so he would receive only 30,000 pesos if it turned out to be good condition. So there will be a regret of 140,000 pesos, okay? And if it turned out to be poor condition, then he would have a regret of 20,000 pesos. And finally, when the decision maker, for example, invested in a car for rent, then he would receive only 96,000 pesos. And he would regret that because he could have invested in stocks. And then the regret would be 74,000 pesos. That is 170,000 less 96,000 pesos. Okay? And if it turned out to be poor conditions, then the regret would only be 7,000 pesos. So after we have computed the degree of regret, we will now choose which among this degree of regrets would give the decision maker the minimum of the maximum regret. So first, we will choose the maximum regrets under each option. So between good conditions and poor conditions, if the decision maker chooses warehouse, then our maximum regret would be 90,000 pesos. So we will choose 90,000 pesos. And between good conditions and poor conditions, under option to purchase an office building for lease, then the maximum regret would be 70,000 pesos, okay? And under good condition and poor conditions, in the option to buy stocks, the maximum regret is 90,000 pesos, again, and that is in poor conditions. And for time deposit, the maximum regret is 140,000 pesos. So between 140 and 20, the maximum regret is 140. And under car for rent, the maximum regret is 74,000 pesos. After we have selected the maximum regrets for each state of nature and for each option, we will now choose which of these options would give the decision maker the least or the minimum regret. And that is the 70,000 pesos. So this is the least regret. So if you are this kind of decision maker or investor in which you consider which of the options would give you minimum regret, then you would select to purchase an office building for lease. Okay, that's it. Now let's go to the fourth criterion in decision analysis. And that is the Hurwitz criterion. The principle underlying this decision criterion is that the decision maker is neither totally optimistic, as in the maximax criterion assumes, nor 
totally pessimistic as in the maxim criteria assumes so in reality not everyone is totally optimistic all the time and not everyone is pessimistic all the time because sometimes we based our decision on our guts on our instinct or intuition sometimes we rely on our feelings that this could happen so we tend to be optimistic at some point and pessimistic at some point so under the Hurwitz criterion, the decision payoffs are weighted by a coefficient of optimism. This is a measure of the decision maker's optimism. For example, how sure are you that it will rain today? Is it 50%? Is it 60%? Is it 70%? So decisions are weighed based on a coefficient of optimism of the decision maker. It is still personal and, and it depends on the attitude or personality of the decision maker. So the coefficient of optimism which we will define as the alpha is between 0 and 1. So this is the alpha. The alpha or the coefficient of optimism is between 0 and 1. If the alpha or the coefficient of optimism is 1, then the decision maker is said to be completely optimistic. But when the coefficient of optimism is zero, then the decision maker is said to be completely pessimistic. And in this Hurwitz criterion, the coefficient of optimism is said to be between zero and one. So the Hurwitz criterion requires that for each decision alternative, the maximum payoff be multiplied by the alpha or the coefficient of optimism and the minimum payoff be multiplied by 1 minus the alpha. So for instance, in our example, in our illustration, assume that the alpha or the coefficient of optimism is 0 0.60. So we have here the warehouse. So under good condition, the payoff would be 80,000 pesos and we will multiply that by 0.60. This is the alpha or the coefficient of optimism. And under poor conditions, our payoff is 40,000 pesos and we will multiply that by 0.40. So this is 1 minus alpha, that is 1 minus 0.60. So adding this together, we would get the average payoff of 64,000 pesos. Meanwhile, for the office building, the Payoff under good condition is 100,000 pesos and we multiply that with 0 0.60. And the payoff under poor condition for option to purchase office building is 25,000 pesos. And we will multiply that by 0.40. So adding this together, we will get an average payoff of 70,000 pesos. And then for the stocks, we have here, the payoff under good condition, it's 170,000 pesos multiplied by the alpha. Then for poor condition, the, the payoff is negative 50,000 pesos. Then multiplied by 0.40. So the average payoff is now 82,000 pesos. For the time deposit, our payoff under good condition is 30,000 pesos times 0.60 and so on and under poor condition the, the payoff is 20,000 pesos times 0 0.40 so we would get an average payoff of 26,000 pesos and finally for the car for rent the payoff under good condition is 96,000 pesos and then multiplied by 0.60 the alpha plus the payoff under bad or poor conditions rather then multiplied by 0.40 and that we will get an average payoff of 70,800 pesos. So from then, we will choose which of these options will give us the maximum or the highest possible average payoff. And in this case, it's the stocks. So under her rich criterion, the decision maker should have to invest in the stocks. So again, in her rich criterion, we assign a coefficient of optimism based on the optimism level of the decision maker and we will choose which of the average payoff will give us the maximum average payoff okay and finally we have the equal likelihood criterion 
under this equal likelihood criterion or the Laplace criterion, this weighs each state of nature equally, thus assuming that the states of nature are equally to occur. So the main argument of the Hurwitz criterion is that the coefficient of optimism is solely based on the decision maker's um, personal bias. So the decision maker could just give any number between 0 and 1 to be the alpha or the coefficient of optimism and that is somehow biased because it is based on his guts or personal preference okay so that is somehow hypothetical here comes the fifth criterion which gives equal possibility that each state of nature will likely to happen so it's 50 50 50 percent that good condition will happen and 50 percent that poor condition will happen therefore in our illustration we will weigh each state of nature the good condition and in the poor conditions by giving them weights of 50 percent or 0.50 so for warehouse you have 80,000 times 50 percent or 0 0.50 plus 40,000 times 0 0.50 that is 60,000 pesos and for the office building we have 100,000 times 0 0.50 and 25,000 times 0 0.50 we will have an average payoff of 62,500 and for the stocks we will have 170,000 times 0 0.50 plus negative 50,000 pesos times 0 0.50 is equal to 60,000 pesos average payoff and for time deposit we have 30,000 pesos times 0 0.50 plus 20,000 pesos times 0 0.50 so we'll get an average of 25,000 pesos and finally for car for rent that is 96,000 pesos times 0 0.50 and 33,000 pesos times 0 0.50 to give us an average payoff of 64,500 so under equal likelihood criterion the decision would be better to invest in car for rent which would give the decision maker an average payoff of 64,500 so again the difference between the Laplace criterion or the equal likelihood criterion from the Hurwitz criterion is that in equal likelihood criterion it gives equal probability that each state of nature will happen we're in in the Hurwitz criterion the coefficient of optimism is based solely on the personal bias or guts or judgment of the decision maker and that is somehow unobjective or biased so we will now summarize the decisions that we have as computed or illustrated from the five different tools in criteria for decision analysis under the maximax criterion the decision maker should invest in stocks and under maximum criterion the decision maker is to invest in warehouse while under minimax regret the decision maker would have a minimum regret when he would purchase the office building and for her which criterion it's again the stocks and finally for the laplace criterion or the equal likelihood criterion it's the car for rent so there are different results from the decision and actually the decision is solely dependent on the decision makers risk appetite so it is still up to the decision maker or up to you whether which of the criterion would suit best for you there is no single criterion that would be best to all of us at some point maximax is the best while also at some point maximin criterion is also better while there are also some scenarios in our lives wherein we need to be cautioned and avoid regret hence minimax regret criterion would best suited in that particular situation and also for some circumstances the Hurwitz or equal likelihood criterion would work best for you so again it depends on what kind of decision maker you are and it depends on how much risk you can take okay so I hope you have learned a lot from this video and also we will have another video for decision analysis which uses the probability so i hope that you will watch also that video if you like this video 
this discussion give me a thumbs up and if you are new to this channel please subscribe and click the bell so you'll be notified whenever i will upload new videos okay thank you so much for watching and see ya